QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Month Number One Checks and Cash Decreases. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to save time with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports as we do every time. Reports on the left in the favorites, right click in the balance sheet, opening a link in a new tab. Same with the profit and loss report. Also, the trial balance. Right click, open link in a new tab. Let's check out those tabs. We open tab into the right, the hamburger, closing it. Change in the range, 010124 tab, 02924 tab. We want to see it on a month by month, side by side. Por favor, running the report. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger to the left. Change in the range in the middle, 010124 tab, 02924 tab. And then changing the months on the left. And then running the report on the right. And then going to the tab to the right, closing the hamburger on the left changing the range in the middle first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line now i'm not saying that subscribing to this channel crunching numbers with us will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 010124 tab, 02924 tab, and the drop down. I feel like I'm announcing a soccer game or something here. And the ball is at the side. Now it's in the middle. Okay, we're going to go into the running of the reports. Let's go back to the balance sheet. And we've been doing our bank reconciliations, remembering that the bank reconciliation is basically, I would say, mandatory for any kind of business as an internal control, whether it be large, small, uh, or using bank feeds or not using bank feeds. We're doing the first month reconciliation, which has that beginning balance issue that we will be addressing at the end of the first month of reconciliation. This is what the books currently say at 88, 8, 10, 27. This is what our mock bank statement says, 61, 241, 85. So we need to do some reconciliation. And that's what we're doing at this point in time. So let's go back to what we started last time. The tab on the left, we're in the transactions. Remembering that the bank transactions over here, bank feeds can help with the bank reconciliations as we'll see in future uh, section or course, but it is not the bank reconciliation to do the bank feeds. The reconciliation is over here. Even if constructing the books directly from the bank, then you still want to do the reconciliation uh, because it'll at least double check that you haven't double entered anything or uh, hadn't pulled some feed in for some reason. We're in the checking account. We're going to resume. If you weren't resuming but was starting from scratch, you would have the info in here being the beginning balance. We can see as a problem because that doesn't tie out to our beginning balance over here. We will deal with that later. That's the first bank rec problem. The date is the date on the bank statement. We're not entering anything for the service charges or interest. I think these are old kind of things that we don't really need anymore, but are pulled in as a legacy article from prior times all the way back to the start of the desktop versions. So then we have our reconciliation summary up top, the statement ending balance, which we just typed in there directly from the bank statement. We have the cleared balance, which is this formula below, beginning balance, payments, and deposits, which will give us our difference, the difference between the statement balance and the cleared balance. Currently, we've only done the deposit side of things. The deposit side of things now matching out. If I go back on over, we're at the... Actually, I'm going to uncheck the 25 here for now. 
We're at the 143.70. That matches the 143.70.85 on the deposits. Now we're going to do all of the decreases. Decreases typically being the largest and most complex portion of the bank uh, reconciliation process if your deposits are properly formatted and grouped in your accounting system. So let's first just give a quick recap of the kind of decreases that we're going to have and what information the bank knows about and what they don't know about. So first we have a check type of transaction. If we have a check, then that means that we physically wrote the check or printed it out of QuickBooks, recorded the transaction when we wrote the check, and then had to, to send the check to somebody. They have to receive it. They have to deposit it in their bank and communicate with our bank before the bank knows about it. So if we're still using manual checks, that means that we're going to have a big difference between the date. The date is going to be much less reliable. The date in our books is going to be much sooner than the date on the bank side because the bank does not know about it until the check has been received, deposited, and cleared basically on their side. But we do have the check number with the check, which is great, giving us an added level of uh, ability to tie out what is happening, even though the date is not going to be as relevant for us. And of course, we have the dollar amount. That's what the bank knows. Now, the bank also has the canceled check, which usually isn't going to populate in the bank like uh, memo area, but is something that you can often go to your online banking and then drill down on. So if you need to see like who the vendor is and whatnot, or who the, who the, yeah, who the vendor is, you might be able to go to the bank statement and look at the canceled check and see the actual check from there. Now, if it was an electronic transfer, then of course you're not gonna have a check. So if you're paying people by electronic transfer, you're not gonna have a check, but the date is gonna be much more close. So even if you're doing a full service bookkeeping system where I pay something in an electronic transfer, enter it at the point in time the transfer happens, it's still gonna clear the bank between like one to three days typically. So if we do a full service accounting system, our date in our books will be sooner than the date on the bank's books still, but they will be pretty close and likely for many small businesses, at least, if we're doing electronic transfers, we're probably going to be dependent on the bank rather than enter the transaction on our side at all. In other words, we won't even enter the transaction on our side, wait till the thing clears the bank and then record the transaction with the use of the bank feeds. In that case, those are the easiest transactions to reconcile because we're not even doing a full service bookkeeping system. We're just, we're just taking the bank's numbers and pulling them into our system. So those types of transactions, again, will be the easiest, uh, the easiest things to reconcile. And then we could have some transactions that are facilitated you know, by the institution that we don't know about, like the bank charges. So the bank service charges, they charge us a fee. We didn't know about the fee. We couldn't have entered it on our side because they didn't invoice for us for it. They just took it out of our account because it's a bank charge. So for that, uh, we would have to enter that in our system if we didn't use the bank feeds. But if we do have bank feeds turned on, then we're probably going to be able to pick that up with the bank feeds. The bank feeds will show that transaction, will approve the transaction, and that is how that will typically be recorded. We also could have money that we took out physically, possibly at an ATM or at a, an institution or at one of the bank locations, right? So the money that we take out with, would be like a, a withdrawal. And in that case, all we would see if we took out cash is the dollar amount that was taken out and the and the date we're not going to see what it was taken out for which could be a problem <laughs> right. all right so that given that what we're going to do the same kind of process we're going to basically say if it's on the bank's books it should be on our books and if it's not we're going to have to add it to our books unless the bank is wrong which is not typically the case if it's on our books but not on the bank's books then that might be okay because that might be outstanding checks that we know about but the bank doesn't know about, therefore they're reconciling items. Because of that system, then we typically want to be going from the bank statement to our books, not from our books to the bank statement, because everything on the bank statement should be on our books, right? Otherwise we'll get confused. 
So I'm going to say there, here's the 12,001. Uh, Hopefully our check numbers match up, but if they don't, bear with me. It's a practice problem. I tried to line everything up here, but we'll go to the payments. So, so let's see. We got uh, this one uh, was, uh, was 12,000, 12,000. So this 12,000, I entered with an expense form instead of a check form. So we don't have the check number, but I can still tie out the, the 12,000 and I can see the date is pretty close. So I have fairly good confidence that that's the one. Uh, again, if I wanted to look at the actual vendor, I can, I can look at the vendor here and the canceled check possibly go into my bank account if I needed to double check it there. So, so I'm going to then go back on over here and say, okay, that one is uh, checked off. I, maybe I'll do the whole thing here and make it green. Okay, then I have the 1,000, the 4,000. Now these two, I'm going to go over and say, hmm, those are not here. If I look through here, I don't see those. And that's going to cause me some worry. That's the beginning balance problem. One of those issues. Those are checks that we wrote last month in December in the prior accounting system, which were outstanding as of last time. And, and now they're clearing. So what do I do with those? Okay, I'm going to deal with those later. Right now, I'm just going to keep on pushing forward. So I'm going to say, all right, the, I, I recognize that those are a problem. Let's go to the 16,000 on uh, 1002 is the check number. And so we'll say, okay, 16, 16 right there. I don't have the check because I entered it as an expense form. Okay, but I'm pretty confident that's the one. So I'm going to say that one is checked off to 7,114. So 7,000 is here. So that, so again, I entered it as an expense form. Okay. So that one good, I'll say. And then the 6892 on 118, 1005. So there's this one and the check number actually ties out this time, that is good. Again, a lot of people are, I'm gonna minimize this by the way. A lot of people probably are using electronic transfers these days, so you're not gonna have the check numbers, but your dates will be, will be more relevant in that case. Okay, so then we're gonna say that one is, is gone or done or checked off, let's say 72106. So we've got the 72 on what that's check numbers 1006 okay so that's good and then i have the 3780 so there's the 3780 1007 1004 okay that's the check number 1004 notice over here they're not exactly in the same order and that's something to to recognize why would that be the case because on this side of things they have to put it by they're going to put it by date most often right they're going to sort their their transactions by date but the date that the transactions cleared the bank might not be in the same order that we enter the transactions on our side especially if you have check forms because because it'll depend on the people that receive the check and how long they took to deposit the check now if they're all electronic transfers again it'll be probably pretty easy because then you're probably just entering your information on your side from the bank and everything will tie out like exactly, right? So this, this one's 1004-3780. Did I already do that one? I think I did that one. That one's done. And then this one's, let's try to do two at a time. Let's get crazy. 12,000 and 620. So 12,000 here and 620. Boom. Leveling it up right there. Leveling it up. All right. Okay. And then we're going to go back i've done those two to do and so and then the last one is going to be fifteen thousand fifteen thousand here we go so that one has been found and i'm going to say that one's good okay now these two i'm going to say i don't find those i don't see the withdrawal and i don't see the bank service charges and if you were using bank feeds you probably would see those because they would come in through the bank feeds and then you would have to enter them from the bank feeds. If you're not using bank feeds, then you would reconcile. Either way, you could have a, a similar issue, you know, with those transactions. You're gonna have to record them, you know, as they come through on the bank feeds. So as of now, we have these two, these two that we're gonna deal with later, and we have these two that we're gonna have to enter. 
And then we have all of these ones that are in our books, but not on the bank statement. What about those? Those might not be a problem. How can we check if they're a problem or not? Well, we could look at the bank state or the bank account online after uh, January in February to see if these cleared. And if they all cleared in the following month, then they're not really a problem because they're just the outstanding items. They are the timing differences. They are the reconciling items between the bank balance and the book balance that will be on the report that will be generated once we finish our bank reconciliation process. So you can see what we're doing. We're finding everything on the bank statement on our books, but the stuff on our books might not be on the bank statement. That's okay. That will be the exact difference once this number gets down uh, to zero. Okay, so now let's deal with let's deal with with these uh, these two down here. So we have a withdrawal and we've got the bank charges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let's leave this for now. I'm going to save it for later and enter those transactions in, and then I'll come back and be able to tag those off. So I'm going to I think the easiest way to do that is in the register. So I'll go directly into the the check register and say where's that? It's in the uh, it's in the transactions check register close on the hamburger, we're in the checking account. I'm just gonna go into the register and enter these directly into the register. Let's select the dropdown and I'm gonna use an expense type form because these are decreases. So I'll use an expense type form as of the end of January, that's what we want. So the first one we had was the bank charge. So I could say it's, what did we say, Chase or well, who's our bank? I don't know, Chase, let's say. And we're going to say Chase is the vendor this time. And this is going to be bank charge. I'll put in the memo. It's going to be a payment of $15, I believe it was. And then I'm going to see if QuickBooks has a bank charge fee, which it typically will. So because bank, let's see if we have bank service charge. Hold on a second. Bank service. I know it has one. There it is bank fees and service charges. So it's a sub account of something on the general ledger, but there it is. Let's use that one. It's a sub account of general business uh, expenses. Okay, so I'm gonna say that one's okay. And then that should allow me to add the bank charges. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's save that. And let's do another one for the withdrawals. So this one, the owner took the money out. So I wanna put owner, as a vendor this time and that's because it's not really a vendor but we can only have a vendor or a customer so i'm going to say vendor because the money's going out and then what this was a draw now here's where the issue is it's a payment i know what the amount is the amount is 150 150 dollars if they took that out of an atm or of of the bank then the question is what was it for and hopefully what you'd like to do is say uh, and if you're a bookkeeper, you'd like to try to manage with your clients and say, hey, look, don't take money out unless you're taking it out as a draw. It's for personal use. You're going to take it out and then you're going to use it to go to Disneyland or buy your personal dinner or go to the movies, whatever you're going to do. What you don't want to do is take the money out and then pay for business stuff with cash. Why? Why not? Because there's no audit trail then because we as the bookkeeper don't know where to put it on the expense side of things because we see the money coming out, but we don't know where it should go. Now, note that this idea of an audit trail uh, for taxes, if, if we're thinking about taxes in the United States on the expenses, if we look at the income statement, you have income minus expenses. Expenses are deductions for taxes. Everything's flipped on its head. Tax, the deductions are good. We want net income to be low on the tax return, so we pay less taxes. So that means that the expenses are good. If you have something that's a legitimate expense, you want the audit trail, because if the government came back and audited you, we would like to say, look, here's the money that was electronically paid to whoever the vendor is, uh, and it's a legitimate business expense, right? So, so that's why for any legitimate business expense, you would typically want to write a check. You would typically want an electronic transfer so that you have a clear audit trail, trail of who you have paid. If you're paying cash for something, 
you don't have an audit trail, you have to like save receipts like the old days. You're going to have to have a, a bunch of receipts that you can then make a copy of and put into the system. But that's not the ideal way to do it. Now, sometimes cash is still king. Like if you're tipping people and whatnot, maybe the cash will go a little bit longer. Some people like doing transactions in cash. So if you still have to use cash, fine. Uh, but the general rule is I would like to not use cash and just use electronic transfers and checks for business stuff if possible. And therefore, any draw of cash, I can assume, will be a draw from the owner for personal use. In that case, it'll be part of the equity, decreasing the equity account over here as a draw instead of going to the income statement as an expense. So we'll show both methods here. I'm going to imagine it's an expense. So we're going to say it's an expense. I don't know what it was for. I'm going to put it into miscellaneous expense. So other miscellaneous expense. And then next time we'll show it as a draw and we'll look at the difference between those two things. So let's go ahead and save it. So we have recorded new transactions that we knew about now because of the bank reconciliation. If I go to my, my balance sheet, my bank balance has now changed. If I go into the, uh, the transactions, we should have then the bank charges and the expenses that we put in place. Let's go back. Let's go to the income statement. Where do they show up on the other side of the transaction? We should have bank fees that are now under business expenses. I'm not sure I need the subcategory of business expenses, so I might uh, remove, I, you know, I probably, if I have time, would remove that. We might do that later. And then the other side, we put into miscellaneous expenses, which they put down here into other expenses, which it may or may not belong in other uh, expenses. A lot of people dump stuff into the miscellaneous expense that are normal business expenses, but they have no other place to put it. So again, I'm not sure that categorization down here would be appropriate, but if you properly used it, that might be the way to do it because these would be expenses that we don't know where they go, can't categorize them, therefore they're down in the, you know, in the other area. But there they are. So that's that. And now if I go back to the first tab and we go back into our transactions and reconcile, we can continue with our reconciliation. We will resume the process. Closing this out. Don't show, don't show me this again. I told you once. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times. So this is going to be then 15 and 150. We should be able to find those and check them off. Here they are. The 150 and the 15. Done. We'll X those off. These have been found. Boom. All right. So now we have everything that has been found except for these two. So if I look at if I look at my balance now at this point in time, I'm going to say, okay, what what is happening here? We've got the we've got this one 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 eight two nine that should be there minus the one thousand minus the four thousand is going to give us the one oh six eight twenty nine, and that's what should be over here now one oh six eight twenty nine because I have the that five thousand that's messing me up right now. So I have the 5,000 messing me up there and I have, uh, I have this 30,000, which is messing me up for the beginning balance, which is showing on our side as a deposit instead of the beginning balance. And it's showing as 25,000. Notice that those two things net each other out. We'll talk more about it later. But if I, if I was to say, hey, hmm, I'm off by 25,000 right here. I don't know, like if I didn't know what was going on, I might say, well, I don't know what's going on. But if I just click off that 25,000, boom, the difference is down to zero. I'm good to go. And you could kind of do that uh, if, if, you, if you, you know, in some cases that might work. However, you're not really entering everything in there and that will not always work, right? Why does that work in this case? Because, because the difference between the beginning balance of 30,000 and uh, and and this and these two checks are is is the difference of the five thousand right that's netting out to the five thousand. But if these checks didn't clear, meaning these were checks that were written, we're assuming in December, but then they cleared in uh, in January, which we're reconciling now. But a, a lot of times you'll have checks that are on the books that shouldn't even be there because because they were entered twice or something, and they're never going to clear. 
If they didn't clear in January, this will not happen. If this check right here, this 1,000 doesn't clear in the following month, then that won't work because now you can have 4,000 here versus a difference of 5,000. So I just, wanna, I just want you to note that that could happen and that could kind of work. Even if it does work that way, you still wanna be skeptical to do that because what you'd really like to have happen is to show that these, these checks uh, were written in the prior period and they were cleared in the current period, which means we would like to actually physically put these checks in our system as of the prior period. And then we'll adjust this beginning balance to be 30,000, so it'll match what we have. So we'll have the same beginning balance of 25,000, but it will be in there as a 30,000 here and two checks, the 4,000 and 1,000, representing the outstanding checks that were in our system, simulating what we would have had in our prior bank reconciliation in the prior accounting system, having those outstanding items, you know, representing the beginning balance so we can properly reconcile. So we'll do that next time. So I'm gonna uncheck this right now, and then we'll dive into that in more detail uh, next time. And, and once we do the first reconciliation, again, the next reconciliation will be easy because we'll have a beginning or cleared balance, which will be proper, which is in the same accounting system, which will then be the proper beginning balance for the following month. Let's take a quick look at our trial balance just to see where we stand because we did make a change. So here's our trial balance as of now. So these are our, our, our balances. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. Uh, if not, try changing the date, see if it's a date range issue. All we did was adjust the bank account and then we made adjustments to that miscellaneous account down below as well as the bank uh, charges, which are right here, I believe, the 15.